Now with World Canned Cocktail Day on uh, the 10th of September, it's about time we kind of looked at these from a pub and par point of view. Are they worth it? You know, can you make good money from these? And can you do better? Now, there is no denying that canned cocktails have come a humongous way just in the last sort of 18 months alone, let alone in the last sort of four to five years. They're a dramatic improvement. So from a bartender point of view, they are so much better than what we kind of used to think of them as in like 2018, 2019. I think kind of White Claw and products like that, those sodas, those alcoholic sodas or whatever they're, they're technically called, kind of, you know, spurred the market. Everyone thought they were going to explode. They didn't. They were never going to explode. Of course they weren't. Um, but people seem to think they were. However, what that did produce is actually canned cocktails. Now, there are pros, there are cons to this. But I just first want to take you back to those, those cocktails. And we've got a couple of here, the one I'm going to kind of class these as. Those cocktails pre-COVID, even 2021, 20, 2022, the really low ABV things that are kind of a little bit sweeter, if you like, and not what you want from a cocktail. But in all fairness, products like this, I don't think are aimed at your bar segment. These are very much grab and go, train station kind of things, maybe if you're kind of out on the high street or, you know, supermarkets, that kind of thing. That's where you find these bad boys. Now, just to give you a couple of broad spectrums here, I've got um, the Absolute's Porn Star Martini, essentially, and we've got Duppy Shares um, Mule, their ginger, you know, dark and stormy kind of thing. Now, ABV-wise, this is what I'm going to be focusing around in this video. ABV-wise, this passion fruit martini for a 250 ml can is 5% ABV okay and then I do believe the actual the rum and ginger beer oh no that's 5% ABV as well so to put that into perspective I'm just going to talk about the rum and ginger beer here for a second okay to put that into perspective 250 ml can is the equivalent to one of those bottles and a 50 ml double bubble of that so, okay, so you've got 250 mil. Now, if I was to pour that, both of those into a glass, that drink would come out at 8% ABV. So you can automatically tell straight away that that is, you know, it's not a double measure in there. Now, you, yes, you could argue that you're going to get a little bit of dilution from any ice, but that's going to be gradual over time. It's certainly not going to bring it down by the time you've drunk it. It's certainly not going to bring it down to 5% ABV. You're only going to lose a, cu like a couple of points, if you like. So in that respect, 5% for that, as opposed to 8% ABV for that, it, it's, you know, it's not really comparative. You're getting much better quality of drink from making it yourself. Now, this is the point I want to go down. Because if you're, you know, these are being targeted to some pubs and some bars, you know, that don't really want to knock out cocktails. You're going to make, but by the time you've bought this in, because these are not that cheap to buy in, by the time you've bought these in, you know, to replicate that with your own products, your own rum, your own ginger beer you've got behind the bar, A, a is going to be a lot cheaper. B, you can sell it for a lot more money. So C, you're going to make a hell of a lot more profit. Now, granted, this is at the really low end of the market. I can't see, I, I, I really don't encourage any single bar, pub or bar, to kind of stock a rum and ginger beer, a dark and stormy you know, as a cocktail, as a grab and go. You can really and easily make it yourself super quick. It's not a technical cocktail. Which then brings me on to these. And so many brands do these. These passion fruit martinis, this is just absolutes. Marks and Spencers have got them. You know, I think Diageo have got one as well. I forget who would that would be from there. Captain, I don't know who. Uh, Smanoff, maybe Smanoff passion fruit martini. I don't know what they what their thing is there. But this is 5% ABV for a 250 ml drink, okay? Now, I do see a few bars stocking products like this because they don't want to make 
passion fruit martinis, porn star martinis. But the difference being, just so you can kind of comprehend this, if you, even my recipe, for instance, that you'll see all over my YouTube channel and, you know, printed on blogs and stuff like that, my recipe for a porn star martini comes out at 12.8% ABV. And that is actually not as strong as some bars. Bear in mind, I do dilute mine down with a little bit of extra Rubicon passion fruit juice, which does bring the ABV down. A lot of bars will be serving porn star martinis up at 15, 16% ABV. So when you've got products like this that are 5% ABV, I really, as I say, I completely see the grab and go market, the train stations, you know, the supermarkets and for you guys, you know, having parties at the weekend. I completely see that market. I do not see the market for these in a bar if you can't be bothered or if you don't want to train staff to make cocktails themselves. 5% ABV for the price, I really don't see it. And these are sweet. They don't taste like the real thing as well. You know, they, they've even got that like, fizziness to them. So yeah, I'm not quite with it with these. However, where we have seen the market evolve quite a lot is these bad boys. Now, I've had a few comments about these. You know, these, these are what the average general public would associate, you know, size-wise, they're going to be looking at 250 mil and they're going to be thinking, oh yeah, I want one of those. When they see canned cocktails like that, they're a little bit smaller and obviously a little bit more expensive. That's when they're kind of like, oh no, you know, that's, you know, for the size, for the price, you know, that's not really what I want. But this is what I mean. This is where the industry and brands like this have come on leaps and bounds and evolved because these are now getting as close to near as damn it as cocktails that you could actually make in your bar. Now I'm going to put these two to one side for a minute and just focus on moth. Now for me, moth, these do taste really, really good actually. I've got a mojito here and a pina colada. I actually really like these and they're both made with duppy share rum. Okay, so the same as the same as that, duppy share rum. Now, my issue with these is that they are still a little bit too weak. They're going for that premium market, but they're 10% ABV. All right. Now, if I was making a mojito at home, my standard mojitos would come out at 12.5% ABV. And probably, and that's me just slightly kind of going a little bit extra soda water. If I was doing them properly, and you know, kind of measuring them out properly, you're probably talking closer to about 13, 14% ABV. But I kind of, you know, added a little bit of extra soda water to the calculations. So my, you know, I'm coming in at 12 and percent. So for these, where they are aimed at the premium market at 10% ABV, yes, I would still class them as a little bit better than that, but they're still for the money, I think slightly under where a bartender would kind of want these if you were looking to sell these. Now, Moth are one of the brands that I actually do see out there quite a lot in pubs and bars. There's certain bar chains, uh, pub chains in the UK that kind of sell these. So, you know, that's kind of, that's the market for them. Now, there is, I'm just going to dive into something, you know, we, we see cocktails on tap here in the UK. I think they're dying out a little bit because of the issues they have with the bag and the boxes and things like that. The market is really going on to cans. There is a lot more canning companies, canning machines out there these days. And a lot of brands, even a local brand to me, is actually canning their own drinks. So it's, it's become a lot easier to do it. And yes, when you're at a smaller level, it is going to cost you more for cans. But when you're talking like absolutes level, duppy shares level, probably even moth level, to be fair, you know, it's actually quite cheap to do it. So I still think there is a bit of room for improvement with a brand like moth. However, they are leaps and bounds above brands like this. The pina colada, the mojito, they do taste really, really good. Now, where I am getting excited is by brands like, especially White Box, and this, I've never heard of this before. I'm gonna crack this a little bit later, but it's a spicy margarita. But the whole thing with White Box, they look tiny. They've got Negroni in this range. I'm sure they've got a margarita in this range as well. We've got the Daiquiri and a Cosmopolitan here. But I'm really, really excited by this because if I was making a Daiquiri at home using my ratios, my measurements that I'm happy with, my Daiquiri actually comes out at just about 22% ABV. This little bad boy, this daiquiri here, is 26% ABV. So that is near as damn it you're going to get, if not 
better than Damir, you're going to get to a proper, proper daiquiri. So if you're a bar, for example, and you really don't want to make drinks, you really don't want to train staff how to make drinks, brands like this, where you can just physically shake it like that, you know, keep them in the fridge, give it a shake, open it and pour it into a Nicanora glass. Is that a bad thing? Just by comparison, the Cosmopolitan is 16.8% ABV. Mine, when I calculated mine out, mine came in at 16.2% ABV. So that's pretty much on the money for where it comes in there. And I've looked at the Negroni as well. Negro Negroni is bang on the money for what I would make. Uh, I think it was about 24, 25% ABV. So as I say, brands like White Box, for me, have nailed it. Just looking at this last one, this spicy, uh, spicy margarita here. Uh, this is coming at 14.5% ABV. Now, my margaritas would be slightly stronger than that. My margarita, I've worked it out here, is about 18 to 19% ABV. So again, that's coming in a little bit under, but I think for something like this, I think this again is kind of geared towards the home market. I can really see a big movement with brands like this kind of going towards pubs and bars, making it super easy for those kind of venues that don't want to make cocktails to actually serve up consistent cocktails. And just the last one I've got here, this is an import, it's my local bottle shop, they've got this imported from Canada here. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with this because this, I haven't opened it, I haven't tried it yet, but this is a cherry spritz, 5% ABV. If you're going to make an Aperol spritz, you know, for the standard, what Aperol recommend, the one, two, three um, kind of method. So 25 mil soda water, 50 mil of Aperol, 75 mil of Prosecco. You are coming in at 21% ABV. So for a spritz, you know, I know, yes, it's going to be topped up with soda, a little bit of bitter in there. But for a 5% ABV spritz, I'm not quite on board with that. Now, let's have this discussion of should a bar go down this route? Should a bar, should you run in a pub, a bar, you know, an entertainment venue or anything like that, should you go down this route? And this is where I'm on the fence because I've had the daiquiri and I really do like it. it it's, it's not quite what I would make at home, but out of a can, I really do like it. I'm kind of impressed by that. But I always come back to it's super easy to make classic cocktails. And I think this is the skill that's dying out a little bit here in the UK, to be honest. You've got that, the mixologist route where they're going off creating weird and wacky cocktails with the rotavaps, their infusions, and all this sort of stuff. And I think at base level, at granular level, it's, it's kind of putting off the entry level bartender to make classic daiquiris, to make classic margaritas, to make mojitos, because they see all this weird and wacky stuff and think, oh my God, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. Whereas actually making up cocktails like the daiquiri and the Cosmo are really, really super easy. Yes, you have got the speed of surf with this. You've got the consistency of surf with this, but I'm just going to bring this back to the cost of buying these in versus the profit you can make from selling your own. Are you really going to tell me that you could sell that tin for 12, 13 pounds? I don't think, you know, I don't really don't think you could kind of get up there. Now, a daiquiri may be verging on towards 10 pounds, you know, nine, 10 pounds if you were kind of making it yourself. But there is just, it's just so easy. And I, I, I just firmly believe, and I, and part of my passion, part of in me, is I want to help the entry level bartenders realize that cocktails can be super, super easy. And this is why I'm on the fence because I know there's a flipping market for this thing. I, I get venues, I get pubs and bars that are going to buy this and I'm super impressed with White Box and what they're doing. I really, really am. I just think, you know, we're missing, as a bartender, we're missing an opportunity to actually refine our skills to learn how to make really simple and really easy cocktails, but act to actually make more money. Now, I don't have a trade account with White Box. I don't know what prices they actually sell into trade. But on their website, if you go on there, that daiquiri is £5.50. And that is exactly what I paid for it in my local uh, bottle shop where I get like cans of beer and all that sort of stuff from. So I would roughly surmise that you're paying circa 
£3.50-ish for that. So in the grand scheme of things, that is about, it's probably a little bit more expensive than you can make the cocktail for. You know, so I, I think you could probably, you can make a daiquiri, you know, a really, really good daiquiri for about £2.50. £3 if you go, if you're really pushing the rum up, you know, £3 for the rum. But like a daiquiri is just rum, lime and sugar. So even, let, let's do the maths of this, even if you said a £28 bottle of rum, and you probably wouldn't use a £28 bottle of rum, but a £28 bottle of rum, break that down, it's 28 shots in a bottle, so you're going to do 14 cocktails, like 50 mil. You know, that is two pounds. Your sugar, your lime juice. So, you know, the grand, the grand scheme of things, you know, your daiquiri should be costing you well under two pounds. Well under two pounds. So there's no way you are buying that for two pounds. But th this, is, this is my argument. This is where we're going with this because it comes back to that selling price again. You're making a daiquiri for, for two pounds, two pound 50. You could sell it easily Bare, bare minimum, £8.50, £9. Bare, bare minimum. So your profit on that is £6, £7. Some bars, if you up the rum, you're going to be selling them for £10, £12. You know, so therefore, you're going to be, say, up in your rum, say it's £3 a buy in, you're going to be making £9, say, per cocktail. Do you, can you really, really make £9 profit from that? Can you make £5 profit from that? I'm not overly convinced. So while I do think canned cocktails are a good, good thing, I, I'm, as I say, I'm super impressed of where the markets come, you know, from these 5% AB jobs up to, you know, the 20, sort of 5, 26% ABV, ABV jobs. If we are going to replicate proper cocktails. I think we kind of, the, I see the market for these, I do. But these are, you know, the 2024 version of your WKD Blues and your Reefs and your God knows what else, your VKs. That's what these are. They're, they're no different. You know, they're, they're just the modern day versions of those. I think if we're talking proper, proper cocktails, we've got to be looking at brands like this. But I just think, I just think before, if you're a pub or a bar, before you go down this route of, selling things like this. Just think of how much profit, extra profit you can make by just a simple investment of training your staff how to make five, six simple cocktails. And I don't want us to lose the art of making those simple cocktails. Cosmo and Daiquiri are two of these easiest cocktails that you could make, you know. And I, I think these are great for people at home. I really, really do. And if you've got a bar where you're just crazy, crazy high volume that you haven't got time to make a daiquiri, then fine, albeit. But I think for your average bar, I really do think stay away from brands like this. Make them yourself.